In this video, we are going to compare 16 different LiDAR sensor data sets from some of the leading manufacturers in the reality capture industry and try to crown a champion. I recently got my hands on 16 different LiDAR and one photogrammetry data sets that all scanned the exact same site and were provided this exact same control file. I am going to compare the horizontal and vertical accuracy of each using a series of independent check shots. We will also compare vegetation penetration and density of data. There has never been a LiDAR accuracy comparison of this magnitude made publicly available and most importantly done by an unbiased user. I didn't collect or process any of the scan data, nor do I have any reason to favor any one data set over another. Let's get into it. The study site that was used is a park in Central Florida that is about eight acres in size. It has a perimeter road running around an interior vegetated area that has a playground and a few structures. The survey control was shot in with a compass rule adjusted closed traverse and the elevations were tightened up with a closed level loop. These control points were provided to a plethora of local companies that brought their best LiDAR sensors and either flew, drove, walked, or leapfrogged the site. These independent companies were solely responsible for the collection and processing of their data. Once I reviewed the data, I went out to the site with a high precision total station setup and the provided control file and shot in 12 features that could be extracted from the point cloud. Every observation I took was shot in with a minimum of three sets of observations. The instrument and equipment were field calibrated beforehand and the observations were post-processed in a least squares adjustment. Adjustment. The standard deviations of my observations from the least squares adjustment were in the range of 2 to 3 millimeters. These values were confirmed in the air propagation program I wrote last year, Survey Buddy. Check out my YouTube channel for more information and a free copy of that. I then brought these check shots into Cloud Compare along with each provided point cloud. To determine the horizontal air, I extracted the coordinates of the feature that was shot in as a check shot and compared the two in an Excel spreadsheet. Sheet. The total station check shot was assumed to be the accepted as true value and the point cloud extracted coordinate was the measured value. In my opinion, this was the best possible method of measuring horizontal error in the data set after the fact that the end user can expect when they are trying to extract horizontal features. To make sure there wasn't a shift in the RGB values over the points due to a camera to LiDAR sensor alignment issue, I checked to ensure the intensity values aligned with the RGB. RGB values. The errors measured with this method can be considered as absolute errors. To measure the vertical error, I rasterized the point cloud taking an average elevation using a grid cell size of 0.1 feet and compared those points to the check shots. Rasterizing the point cloud in this situation basically took an average elevation of all the points in a 0.1 by 0.1 foot box and returned a new point. I then selected the four nearest rasterized points surrounding the check shot and used those as my measured point cloud elevations. I chose to do this because when the delivered point clouds were going to be used to create a surface, it is likely a similar form of averaging the elevations of the points would have been used and I wanted to reduce the chance of outliers in the point cloud causing results to appear worse than they were. I wanted to use four elevation points so I could still see which clouds had more vertical spread compared to others. The final vertical error was calculated off an average of the four selected points. There were a few issues I noticed while going through the data while creating the air spreadsheet. The data I received for the Leica RTC360 wasn't provided in the same coordinate system as the control file. It seemed to be a metric version of it, although when I scaled the point cloud up to US survey feet, it still didn't fit correctly. There was something wrong with the data set and I eventually had to abandon it. The mobile data set from the Hasai sensor didn't capture much of the surrounding road and since it was mobile data, it did not penetrate well enough 
path off the perimeter road to pick out horizontal locations of my chat shots, but I was able to compare elevations. Looking at the data, I would assume they had the sensor pointed inward to capture the interior of the site. This data had significant vertical error and quite a bit more vertical spread than any other data set. The Navis VLX3 data set had an unexpectedly high level of horizontal error in the range of 0.2 feet. After speaking with one of the surveyors that was on site during the data capture process, it sounds like it was most likely caused by user error from the operator of the instrument that was relatively new to using that unit. This data set was not used in the final accuracy comparison. The terrestrial scanners provided the densest data sets. The Faro scan had more points per square meter compared to any other data set. Whether or not this density is necessary depends on your application, and anyone that's tried to work with point clouds in the billions of points knows it can be quite difficult for most computers or software packages to handle data set this large. That being said, you can always strip away points in the office, but you cannot add new ones in. How the data was captured also affected density of points significantly. The Faro data set appeared to have more scan setups compared to the Regal VZ600i, for example. As a result, there were areas of the Regal scan with much lower density. The land-based scans didn't provide accurate RGB values in areas in which their cameras couldn't see, and the same is true of the UAV scans. This was expected but should be noted. For example, the land-based scans didn't colorize overhead features like rooftops and trees, and the UAV scans erroneously colorized points that penetrated tree canopies with green values that their cameras picked up from the leaves of the trees. The mobile scans lost density quickly after the edge of the road. This was especially true of the VMY-1 that had a single sensor. The VMX-2HA created a much denser data set and colorized points further off of the road due to its dual sensors and multiple cameras. The cheaper UAV sensors that collected fewer points per second produced less dense data sets, affecting horizontal accuracy for feature extraction. The photogrammetry data set was unable to provide any accurate points under overhead obstructions and had quite a bit of vertical fuzz in the point cloud. The terrestrial data sets provided the most accurate results with an average horizontal error of 13 millimeters horizontally and 4 millimeters vertically. This was not a huge surprise for a couple of reasons. Terrestrial scanning has the most stable platform for their sensor as it is sitting motionless on a tripod. Having a denser data set allows for one to extract horizontal features more precisely. If your data set only has a point every 20 millimeters, it will be impossible to define a feature more precisely than that. The three units used in this comparison all had near identical errors associated with them horizontally, although the ZNF point cloud was significantly noisier vertically than the Regal or Faro. And since I don't know exactly how each data set was processed, it is possible those two point clouds had additional post-processing to condense the vertical component of their points. The SLAM units produced the second most accurate results with an average horizontal error of 19 millimeters and 8 millimeters vertically. The VLS X2 had a very visually appealing data set that was very dense and quite accurate considering how quickly the data was captured. The Emicid data did not have RGB values and was not dense enough to pick out the interior check shots based on intensity alone. The UAV points produced the third most accurate results with an average horizontal error of 22 millimeters and 11 millimeters vertically. The density of all the UAV sensors was too poor to pick out horizontal coordinates of the interior check shots due to over overhead obstructions. The mobile units produced the fourth most accurate results of the LiDAR data sets with an average horizontal error of 41 millimeters and 8 millimeters vertically. I was a bit surprised by the poor performance of the horizontal accuracy of the Regal mobile units. I was later informed that these data sets did not use the control for horizontal shift, only vertical, and relied solely on GNSS observations to horizontally locate their data sets. Lastly, the tried and true DJI Phantom 4 Pro. This data set proved to be quite accurate out in the open with, with a horizontal error of 10 millimeters and 11 millimeters vertically. But again, since this was a nadir only flight, nothing was mapped under any overhead obstructions. And if we had check shots in any kind of vegetation, they would have shown significant error. My intent when I set out to do this accuracy comparison was to determine which of these 17 data sets was the most accurate, which sensor was the best, 
which could penetrate vegetation better and create a more dense cloud compared to the others. As I dug deeper into the datasets, a few things became apparent. Terrestrial scanning was more accurate and provided a better point cloud than SLAM, and SLAM beat out UAV in the same categories. Mobile was a bit of a wash accuracy-wise, considering it wouldn't be a totally fair comparison if control points weren't used horizontally. The Regal scanners did produce a relatively better product than the Hassau scanner, and the pre premium Regal scanner produced a better data set in all respects compared to the other two. Photogrammetry is a perfectly acceptable solution for any sites that don't have areas with vegetation or overhead obstructions that need to be mapped. I chose not to state the accuracy of each sensor because there is so much variation in how the data was captured. If this test was repeated with different crew members capturing and processing the data, I'm quite certain we would see different results. That being said, I'm fairly confident that the standings would not change. In terms of accuracy from what I've seen here, I think Terrestrial would beat SLAM and SLAM would beat Mobile and UAV. As for who would take third place, I'm not as sure. I'm willing to bet there are enough variables that it would be hard to say one would always be more accurate than the other. For example, I believe Mobile would be able to more accurately define a feature on the side of a building next to the road, but I believe UAV would be capable of more accurately defining a horizontal feature 30 yards off the edge of road nearing the limits of a mobile data set. Hands down, the most important conclusion I can draw from this experiment was that how the data is captured and processed makes a larger difference than how much you spend on a particular sensor. Yes, some sensors will provide more points per second and have a better IMU, but if you are not tying that into control properly, then was spending that extra $50,000 on a more expensive of sensor worthwhile? If you spend 100000 on the newest SLAM scanner and strap it on someone that doesn't have the proper training and experience, there's a good chance you won't get the results you had hoped for. If you are trying to rush a job by skipping scan setups and thinking that your top tier terrestrial scanner will allow you to cut corners, then you may be in for a surprise when you get back to the office and start processing your data. If I had to place a wager on a relatively inexperienced team with a best set money can buy setup compared to a crew that knew what they were doing with a setup that cost one fourth as much, but that had the knowledge how to properly bring in survey control into a project, I'm betting on experience every day of the week. If nothing else, this comparison highlighted that field and office procedures are more important than how much you spend on a sensor.